Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Chicago Ideas Festival, uh, the water talk, if you will. I'm Peter Glick. I'm from the Pacific Institute in Oakland, California. Uh, I'm a scientist by training, a hydroclimatologist. Uh, I'm a member of the US National Academy of Sciences. This being Chicago, I should mention I'm a MacArthur Fellow. Um, I'm a water wonk in general. I, I love water, all aspects of water. Um, we have 90 minutes to talk about water. It's not enough time, uh, given the depth of the issue, the complexity of the issue, uh, the expertise and diversity of the speakers we have, but um, you'll get, pardon me, a drink from a fire hose uh, during the next little period of time. I'm going to start by giving a little bit of an introduction. Uh, we live on a water planet. Everything we care about is connected to water the production of food, the goods and services that we produce and consume. Uh, energy and water are connected very closely together. Water and natural ecosystems, there's a human right to water. Water is an economic good. Uh, there are many contradictory and challenging issues around water. We're going to touch on a few of them, um, pro and probably not in the depth they deserve, but nevertheless. And the Greek poet Pindar said, water is the best of all things. Uh, and in many ways it is. It's hard to imagine if we had to do without any of the modern conveniences whether, whether water would be in the top 10 list at all. The truth is we can't do without water. I'm gonna do two things. Uh, I'm going to talk about why there's a water crisis at the global and local levels, and I'm going to talk about how we're going to solve the water crisis uh, in a very short period of time as an introduction to the other speakers today. So first of all, we have a water crisis. Uh, it's in different forms, in different ways, in different places, at different times, uh, but there is a water crisis. And probably the most significant example of the fact that we have a water crisis is that we have failed in this, the 21st century, to meet basic needs for water and water services. There are almost a billion people worldwide today that don't have access to safe drinking water. There are two and a half billion people worldwide that don't have access to adequate sanitation. And that by itself is a failure. That by itself is a crisis. Uh, that by itself leads to bad things, to water-related diseases. Two million or so deaths a year from cholera and dysentery and guinea worm and schistosomiasis and the things that happen when we don't have access to safe water and sanitation, and other speakers will address that in more detail. But by itself, that's inexcusable because we know how to solve that problem, and yet we have failed to solve that problem. The second aspect of the world water crisis is the environmental aspect. The reality is that all of the water that humans take for the things that we want to do come from the natural environment. And the natural environment depends on those water resources as well. And so we see around the world, locally and abroad, ecosystem destruction and fisheries extinctions and the drying up of river deltas and all of the ecological problems that occur when humans take the water that we require for our own uses. And so that's the second aspect of it. The third aspect is related to water quality. The, the reality is we live on a water planet, but much of the water that we depend upon, we also unfortunately contaminate in different places, in different ways, with human wastes, with industrial wastes. Um, much of the debate today about bottled water versus tap water, and I, I have no choice but, but to, um, to say the, the organizers made the mistake of leaving bottled water on my seat over here in preparation for this. But the debate about, and I wrote a book about bottled water, which is out there if you're interested in it. The debate about bottled water is partly a debate about water quality. It's partly because we're increasingly fearful of our tap water. We have a remarkable tap water system in this country. It could be better than it is. We know how and we have the money to make it even better than it is. But it's already remarkable and bottled water and the consumption of bottled water is an indication in part about our fear of water contamination. The fourth problem is related to water and conflict. We fight over water. There's a, I'm from California in the western United States we have a saying that the two hardest things to keep out of water are salt and politics and the truth is 
we're better at keeping salt out of water than we are better at keep, uh, keeping politics out of water. There's a long history of conflict over water resources. We fight over water. Water's been used as a weapon. It's been used as a tool in wars that start for other reasons. Uh, one of the things we do at the Pacific Institute is we maintain a chronology called the water conflict chronology of conflicts over water going back 5,000 years in myths and legends and history. And if you're interested in history, go look at the water conflict chronology. But the sad fact is we fight over water. And the sad fact is conflicts over water are growing, not shrinking. Uh, many of these conflicts are subnational. They're not international, but they're between ethnic groups. They're between upstream users and downstream users. They're between farmers and the cities. Uh, water and politics is a part of the global water crisis. The fifth issue is climate change. And we're not going to talk much about climate change here, uh, except to sit, for me to say that climate change is a real problem. We are changing the climate. Uh, the climate and the hydrologic cycle are intimately connected. As we change the climate, we're going to see changes in rainfall patterns, storm frequency and intensity, the demand for water. The truth is climate change means impacts on water resources. And we already see some of those impacts and they're going to get worse, uh, I would say, before they get better, but I don't even know if they're going to get better. Climate change is a serious challenge for water resources moving forward. And the sixth part, part of this water crisis is our institutions. Uh, we developed a whole set of complex institutions to deal with water resources, water utilities, water companies, community level, global level, at the UN, uh, at the level of the United Nations and international organizations, at the federal level. We have 20 odd federal agencies. Uh, that, that wasn't a, a comment, odd. 20 or so federal agencies that deal with some aspect of water in the United States. The truth is we don't manage water very well and we don't manage it for a sustainable future. And that is part of our challenge as well. So we have a water problem, but we have solutions. So in the last little bit of time that I have, let me simply say, I believe that ultimately and inevitably, we're going to move to a sustainable future for water. I think that's the good news. Uh, I think that inevitably we're going to figure out how to deal with water sustainably, how to meet ecosystem needs, human, basic human needs, how to deal with conflicts over water, how to deal with people who haven't quite figured out how to turn off their cell phones. I think we will, we will learn all of these things in the years to come. And so let me, let me offer uh, six solutions to our water problems and our other speakers will address some of these in more detail. The first is we have to rethink supply. Traditionally, in the 20th century, supply meant build another dam, drill another groundwater uh, well, and tap another aquifer, build a pipeline from the next river basin over and bring more water in when you've used all of the water in your local watershed. That was the traditional approach. Find another source of supply. We are reaching limits on supply. We have reached, in many parts of the world, what we call peak water. We might want more water out of the Colorado River, for example, a renewable river, but we can't have any more because we consume the entire flow of the Colorado River. We might want more water out of non-renewable groundwater aquifers, but we can't. That's not sustainable. We have to have new thinking about supply, and new thinking about supply means thinking about different sources of water. Treated wastewater, we collect and treat a huge amount of wastewater worldwide, and then we throw it away. Treated wastewater is an asset, not a liability. It's a new source of supply. Innovative rainwater harvesting, desalination if we can beat the economic and environmental challenges associated with it. There are new sources of supply out there, and that's the first piece of the puzzle. The second piece of the puzzle, though, is demand. We have to rethink what we do with the water we already capture and treat and deliver and use. The reality is we don't want to use water. We want goods and services. We want to grow food. We want clean clothes. We want to wash our dishes. We, we want to get rid of human wastes and deal with industrial wastes. Many of the things we want to do require water. But I'd like to argue that almost everything that we want to do requires less water than we spend to do it. And that's the issue of demand. Let's think about how we're using water, and let's think about how to use it more productively. 
produce more food with the water we're already using, produce more goods and services more efficiently with less water. The reality is the potential to manage our demand for water is huge, and it's cheaper, and it's more environmentally sound than finding new sources of supply. So that's the second piece of the puzzle. The third is quality. We have to treat our water more carefully. We have to stop contaminating water, which we then have to treat at great expense. And we have to find new ways of treating water. And we have to find different ways of using different qualities of water. Why are we using potable water to water, water our lawns? Why, some might ask, do we have lawns? <laughs> Why, in this 40th anniversary of the Clean Water Act, have we not developed new ways of treating new pollutants? The Clean Water Act anniversary, the 40th anniversary is October 18th, and yet this Congress has not yet stepped up to modify and update that 40-year-old law. Water quality, protecting our water quality is a third element of this. The fourth element is smart economics. Water is a human right. The UN declared water as a human right just two years ago. But water is also an economic good. Most of us pay far too little for the water that we use. The, the truth is, you probably pay less for your water than you pay for your cell phone, your landline, if you still have one, your energy bill, your uh, cable TV. All of these things are less important to us than water. We pay too little for water. Let's use smart economics. Let, let's price water properly. Let's deliver water at, at the full economic cost that reflects environmental values. And let's figure out how to get the power of economics on the side of the power of water sustainability. The fifth is community participation in water. And again, you're going to hear from other speakers about this. But the way we managed water in the 20th century was top down. And the smart way to manage water is bottom up. Communities know what they want. And the most effective way to deliver water and water services is to work directly with communities and to understand how communities work and what communities want. And a new era of community management of water, I think, will help move on this soft path to the future. There are new technologies, SMS technologies, smartphone technologies, innovative internet technologies that are all going to help the community aspect of management of water. And finally, institutions. Again, as I've said, we developed a whole set of institutions, complex institutions, to manage water in the 20th century. We need new institutions or better institutions in the 21st century. Darwin said, if the misery of our poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. The reality is, great is our sin. Our institutions are largely responsible for the mismanagement of water. And yet, there are institutional solutions as well. All of these things put together, rethinking supply, rethinking demand, rethinking quality, smart economics, smart institutions, community management, all of these things together will lead to a soft path to the future, will lead to a sustainable future for water. With that, I'm going to, to stop. I'm going to uh, come back and introduce our speakers one at a time as they come. But we have water problems. And we have water solutions. And I look forward to the conversation about moving forward on those solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you.